good evening all welcome to this uh, interesting case of the month so we'll try to see one interesting case of the month so coming to the history 26 year male uh, with history of head injury two days back unconscious gcs was four history of one episodes of seizures and vomitings after head injury so this is the initial scan i'll play the video for you so this is the initial scan there is a restricted diffusion DWA noted in the great matter junction of right temporal lobe in the spleen of carpus callosum at some pericular zolaria and in great matter junction of bilateral frontal lobes which is uh, high, showing hyper intense areas on DWI with low, low value ADC values and also you can see in flare you can see there is soft tissue swelling noted in the uh, Preceptual compartment of right orbit, premax has soft tissues and in soft tissues of scalp in the right frontotemporal regions and left temporal regions. There was also a hypointense area noted in the left thalamus, which is hypointense on T2 and flare showing blooming on GRE with prelegional edema. And also there are tiny uh, microhemorrhages noted along the periventricular divide matter and subcortical white matter of bilateral frontal lobes. So even the follow-up scan was done in this case. This is the initial scan. This is the follow-up scan. You can see follow-up scan. The lesions which are mentioned, which we have seen in the initial scan, have been progressed. There is increase in the restricted diffusion DWA in the spleen of carpus callosum, and also there are multiple lesions also developed in the subcortical white matter of frontal lobes more than the initial scan, which are hyperintensity or DWA low on ADC, and even in the flare hyperintensities, uh, there is increase in the intensity of the flare hyperintensities in the spleen of carpus callosum, pericular area, and also in subcortical white matter of parietal frontal lobes. And sometimes even if the history of trauma is not there, you can find the indirect signs of trauma that is soft tissue swellings in the premaxial soft tissues, in the soft tissues of scalp and also in the um, uh, hemocyanesis. These are the, all the indirect signs of uh, trauma which we can suspect so that the history of trauma can be suspected in these type of cases. So in this case, we have already seen. Uh, so there is a... Uh, we have already seen so there is a uh, hyper intensity on dwa noted in the sub uh, spleen of carpus callosum at some pericular area and also in the gravid matter junction of right temporal lobe and bilateral frontal lobes which are hyper intense on dwa with low adc values okay. this is a classical case of diffuse axial injury and it is grade 2 because it is involving both the carpus callosum and also in the lobes so even there is a there was a hyper intense lesion in the th left thalamus uh, which is showing blooming on GRE with adjacent perlegial edema. So this was a hemorrhagic contusion in left thalamus. Next also in this case in the video you can pause the video and previously go to the slides and pause the video and see. There are tiny, these are the tiny hemorrhagic foci. These are the tiny micro hemorrhages which can be seen in the periventricular deep white matter and also in the uh, subcortical white matter of bilateral frontal lobes. Here you can see in the subcortical white matter of bilateral frontal lobes. Here also you can see in the subcortical right of barital font so you can see tiny hemorrhagic foci which are nothing but cerebral micro hemorrhages which are also seen in dye. So these uh, we will in the next subsequent slides we will also see what are the other causes of cerebral micro hemorrhages. So coming to diffuse axial injury you can see these are uh, typical CT findings will be tiny hypertense foci as we have seen in this case these are the tiny hypertense foci can be seen in the gravid matter junction and also in the carpus callosum which which may show restricted diffusion on DW and also which will be low on ADC. So typically carpus callosum especially spleenium will be involved followed by brainstem and even interventricular hemorrhage correlates with the dye. MRI is mostly superior to CT in detecting hemorrhagic and non-hemorrhagic dye lesions. Hemorrhagic lesions, HW is the best tool to detect hemorrhagic dyes and flare is the best current tool to detect non-hemorrhagic uh, parenchymal lesions. And uh, Schaffer et al. demonstrated that the volume of the alter DW shows a stronger correlation with clinical outcome and Glasgow coma scale rather than flare. In uh, 1H MRI scans, mild TBI and dye are associated with reduction of NAA and increase in choline due to membrane disruption, reduction of NAA choline and NAA creatine ratio. Even in DTI, there will be areas of decreased fractional an anisotropy and also there will be increased mean diffusivity, which implies neuronal disintegration. Even nuclear medicine or PET scans may show hypermetabolism in cingulate gyrus, lingular gyrus and cuneus. 
so basing upon the characterization signal characterization on dw and adc these lesions can be classified into three types that is type 1 dw and adc hyper intense lesions most likely represent vasogenic edema in type 2 the dw will be hyper intense and adc will be hypo intense indicating cytotoxic edema in type 3 there will be central hemorrhagic lesions surrounded by area of increased diffusion so coming to the grading according to the locations diffuse axial injury lindell gentry translated the histopathological grading system into radiological grading system which was published in 1994 stage 1 which is low bar that is you can see these are the low bar areas of restricted diffusion and dwi which are confined to the low bar white matter especially gravate matter junction common signs will be parasagittal areas of frontal lobes periventricular temporal lobes less common sites will be parietal and occipital lobes internal external capsules and cerebellum stage 2 typically involves the callosal lesions that is carpus callosus and most common sites will be posterior body and spleen of carpus callosum less common sites are anterior body and rostrum of carpus callosum and also stage 3 is nothing but the brain stem involvement which is classically seen in brain stems typical locations will be dorsolateral midbrain upper pons and superior cerebellar peduncles so these are the three gradings according to the location in diffusion axon injury uh, so this was other case where you can see 26 year male with history of rta unconscious gcs5 and scissors you can see restricted diffusion and dwi in the spleen of carpus callosum and also in the subcortical white matter of bilateral frontal lobes uh, which are showing low adc values and typically there is blooming on gre within the lesions so this is a classical case of hemorrhagic dye and the sagittal sections of the carpus callosum typically shows the diffuse edema and uh, injury of the carpus callosum except uh, sparing the genu cum rostrum so this was a case of hemorrhagic diffuse axial injury and sw sequence and gre sequences are t2 star gre sequences typically depicts hemorrhagic dye and differentiate hemorrhagic dye from diffuse axial injury that is non hemorrhagic dye so even we have seen there are multiple cerebral micro hemorrhages can be seen in dye so this cerebral multiple cerebral micro hemorrhages you can see multiple cerebral micro hemorrhages are commonly even other also seen in uh common cause will be cerebral amyloid microangiopathy and chronic systemic hypertension these are the most common causes other can be diffuse axon injury as we have seen in this case other cause will be cerebral embolism even cadacil that is cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy and subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy multiple cavernous malformations vasculitis radiation vaculopathy peri romberger syndrome and hemorrhagic micrometastasis these are the different other causes of cerebral micro hemorrhages apart from diffuse axon injury so coming to the summary so the most common mechanism involves a sudden rotational accelerating and deceleration motion that leads to shearing of nerve fibers a cortex and white matter have different densities so therefore they rotate at different speeds during a closed head injury leading to misalignment axons and stretching of the axons the stretching of the axons called depolarization metabolic alteration cellular swellings and cytotoxic edema and even apoptosis that is uh, even ct if normal in clinically suspected case of dye cases repeat the ct in 24 to 48 hours if mri is unavailable dw helps to determine the additional shearing injuries not visible on t2 and flair sequences T2 flare and DW uh, are C are typically useful for ca characterization non hemorrhagic lesions whereas T2 star GRE has susceptibility weighted imaging for classically diagnose the micro hemorrhagic or hemorrhagic dye MRI is the most diagnostic tool in diagnosing dye in persistent vegetative states after severe head trauma or poor GCS Shaffer et al has demonstrated that volume of alter DW shows a stronger correlation with clinical outcome and glasgow coma scale than flare on dti these areas show decreased fractional anisotropy and increased mean diffusivity which implies neuronal disintegration 3d tactography which reveals disruption of the white matter fibers provide useful information in the diagnosis and prognosis of diffuse axon injury so thank you all